Look guys, first things first, before we even get to one of my favorites of all time. Up next, Return to Krondor over here, back in the day, was one of the most magical RPGs to ever capture an excellent story with the perfect aesthetic. Some of you might be familiar with the franchise over here as to a somewhat mixed game, but personally speaking at the moment, I literally can't think of a better IP to make a comeback with just a better and improved gameplay, let alone new entry. You know what I'm after. Everything else is yours for the taking. We hit him hard, so you don't have much time. By the gods, I've got to get out of this business. Now, first of all, this still comes to me as a surprise that Heretic, which we're gonna get into in about two minutes from now, and Hexen, which is its sequel, that came out all the way back in 1995, shipped a combined total of roughly 1 million units back when folks barely had a clue what first person shooters actually meant. Now, this is a first person shooter, as you can see at heart, that takes place in another realm called Kronos. Hexen even used a modified version of the Doom engine which was released a couple of years prior to this game. MTK, which for the most part was a run and gun third person shooter, was both a commercial and critical success franchise that's so good, the developers of which decided to begin work on a sequel immediately when the game was released. MTK, for those of you unfamiliar, tells the story of a janitor who must attempt to save Earth from an alien invasion. It's a really comedy-themed game and one of a kind in almost every single element. MTK's system requirement back in the day were a 16 megahertz Pentium, about 16 megabytes of RAM and so like 20 megabytes of storage. And just a compatible video card as well. <laughs> Thank you. 
Heretic, however, which I mentioned earlier, all things considered, was one of the most underrated first-person shooters back in the day when 3D Realms came out with Doom and Duke Nukem games. However, Heretic was one of the first first-person games to feature inventory manipulation and also the ability to look up and down, something I believe Duke Nukem and Doom didn't actually have. The game itself set in a dark fantasy world, like it's kind of Souls-like and it's by Raven Software and ID Software, two great amazing companies even to this day. Magic Carpet was actually one of the earliest projects EA Games came up with back when the company wasn't even called EA, I mean it had to be called Electronic Arts. It's a 3D flying game at heart, but technically speaking, some sort of a first person shooter, actually so one of a kind that it's well not only gameplay but graphics were both considered to be two of the most innovative elements in a video game to that day. Uh, a year later it then even received a sequel called Netherworlds that even had a multiplayer mode. These archers guard a spell jar. They must be vanquished. Build the strongest castle you can and fill it with mana. Fireflies are lethal. Destroy them. Moving on by Monolith Productions, it recently brought our way the middle of games, you know, The Shadow of Mordor, a game called Blood, which is as you can see a first person shooter that follows the story of an undead gunslinger in early 20th century. Blood over here even features a number of Colton horror themes that includes a large amount of graphic violence, that is in addition to some insane arsenal of weapons out of any game. It is, without a doubt, I'd like to think one of the best projects to make a return in any way, any day of the month. Next up, well, the nothing but pure nostalgia, Little Big Adventure, or what some of you might know today by Twinson's Little Big Adventure Classic, is a retro action adventure game originally released all the way back in 1994. Uh, some regions it was even called Relentless Twinson's Adventure. Now, uh, this game was initially released on CD-ROM, floppy disks, and then even Android and iOS devices in 2014. That goes without saying that a third entry now, or some sort of a re 
remake would be the perfect surprise. One of the first person shooters that personally got me and a lot of people I'm sure into liking the first person genre as a whole back 25 years ago was Redneck Rampage. The game so classic and comedy that still holds a positive reputation among not only fans but gamers overall. So good that it even garnered about 5 add-ons to a spin-off to make it even more funny. Honestly it is just something I'd really wish to happen especially now that there's so little out there when it comes to comedy classics. And oh I almost forgot, Redneck Rampage is probably one of the best soundtracks out of the whole gaming scene to this date. Check it out. The Legend of Karandia Book 2, by the way, Hand of Fate, is a point-and-click adventure game, two-dimensional as you can see, developed by Westwood Studios and published by Virgin Interactive in 1993, just like Land of Lore, which I'll mention in a minute. Hand of Fate, however, was actually a commercial disappointment and was highly criticized for its short gameplay span. However, it was also praised for its style of puzzles. Personally, I've actually never played this one, it just really felt like it deserves a spot over here, but if you did, please Please go ahead and let me know about it down in the comments. games to be developed by Milestone, the same company known today for its MotoGP and ride racing games so well received it actually led to two more entries as DOS games. It's definitely a strange racing game in its day and age, considering how it was actually developed on DOS and still works on Windows. Other than this, I'd also like to mention Death Rally from 1996, which is still pretty fun to play to this day, it's also free on Steam, if you care to check it out.
Moving on, it's the land of Floor, Throne of Chaos, that released all the way back in 1993 as one of, if not the first role-playing game to ever be developed for DOS, where you will travel across different environments, collecting items, and battling monsters. Now, this game is a dungeon crawler, of course, presented in real time, as you can see. For those of you unfamiliar, whose identification started other franchises as well, such as Dungeon Master and much, much bigger games today, such as Skyrim. No, don't oh, oh, Nicole. My liege, it is as we feared. Scotia has uncovered the temple and will have the Nether Mask soon. We must be ready for her. She will come here first. But Richard, what worry have we here at Gladstone? Surely we can arrange a defense against any charades. The mask is not a toy. The time has come, and I have no choice. I must destroy her now. Blackthorn or Blackhawk in some European countries was the first game to be described as a cinematic platformer. Now, this was developed by Blizzard Entertainment almost 30 years ago. It is a game so well made that it then released for Windows, then is in the Switch and other consoles as well February last year. Now, Blackthorn upon release won the Game of the Month award. It was praised for its overall dark, really dark tone, amazing animation and gameplay and the ability to make so many different decisions. This, personally, is the one game that gives me the chills every time I remember how it made me feel as a kid, which I probably wasn't supposed to watch anyway. Девушка, играете в шахматы как мужчина. Ваш ход. And last but not least, it's the one and only The Last Express. An adventure game at heart, but a game so unique in how it was created. And basically one of the games that started the whole non-linear story concept within real time. Now remember, it's an adventure game, actually a mystery adventure. Last Express was, however, a commercial disappointment, but received highly positive review scores. Later on, a PlayStation port for the game was also in development, but was unfortunately cancelled before it was even finished. This was a beautiful game back then. I believe you have my key. Could I have it back, please? enough guns for the day. Tell me, when you killed Tyler, was that part of the job or was that your own idea? I, I don't know what you mean. You don't know you work for the Austrian secret police? Or you don't know you killed Tyler? But I didn't kill him. They sent you to break up Tyler's arms deal. You killed him and you stole the gold egg he was carrying. I didn't. It wasn't me. I've never killed anyone. I swear it. I... I'd met Tyler Whitney once in New York. I recognized him at the station. Once we were moving, I came and knocked. The door was open, so I let myself in. And there was blood all over. The egg! It was sitting on the table by the window. I took it, but I didn't kill him. The first time I saw you calling yourself Tyler Whitney, I thought you killed Anna, him. Look out! Bewegung. 
Let her go. Vienna. I I have to go now. 